Here I'm using, you know, guitar pedals on drums. In this middle section, what I've done here is just mold the snare off and put a plug-in on it, and um, I'll show you why. Here's what the song sounds like without the duplicated track. Just kind of normal. So I've molted the snare off, turned it off everywhere in the song except in this section, and I've added, this is one of my favorite, this Tube Screamer emulation, and I love the spring. I love the delay in here, and let's hear what it sounds like by itself. So when I add that into the real snare, Here's the cool thing about this plugin is you can reverse. This is spring following the overdrive, but so easy to, a little more boingy this way. In the track, not as cool. It's kind of cool right there. A little less crazy. And then this part of the song, I'm just gonna turn this track on and off. with it. So I'm adding a little more excitement by using some of these guitar plugins on the drums. And I don't know why anybody uses hi-fi distortion, but to me, Tube Screamer is one of the greatest things in the world. Distorting reverb is something that we did a lot of on Queens of the Stone Age type records. These are some of my, I'll just play a different preset. This is usually my favorite one, is delay following overdrive. Maybe not in this particular application, maybe more on a vocal, but pretty cool. Another example of where you could put GTR in this particular section, we did some little Tom overdubs. Regular, and then... That Tube Screamer and this little graphic after it, so... The beauty of the graphic EQ, so easy to use. Such a beautiful thing because all the beautiful frequencies are already made for you so instantly. And I think, don't think people take advantage of graphics ever. A lot of times on a mixing, I'll get some people that send stuff in with plugins on them and the, they look like the most insane curves you've ever seen in your life. And I'm like, who's that? You're like randomly drawing frequencies. But I am really a big fan of starting simple. Now, obviously, if this needs some surgery, we're going to go a little bit deeper. But shaping this drum sound instantly. It's already distorted if I bypass it. And it's cool. You can mold it into whatever you want. Now, we're doing it in solo, so we, that would never happen. We would do it in the track, and maybe we would do it against the cleaner toms. And that's even cooler that you can sweep it at the same time. It's such a cool sound, sweeping a kid. Those are the kind of sounds that I, I always, I say this one's for the kids. This is for the person in the headphones where they go, what is that going on right there, you know? And they don't really know. And spending that extra two seconds it takes to maybe automate that or print it if you're doing it live, or even if you're reamping it and not using a plugin, just something to make it different. I think makes your mix a little more. Um, it's more like a performance. 
and and it always makes you want to you know I, I love mixes when I listen to a song and I hear it back 10 times and I discover something new every time then it really intrigues me on what the mixer was doing at that point. Mm -hmm. 